three brand new locomotives. All of them are without power. It is sub-zero, blowing snow, real northern plains cold. The pull is gone, and you are praying the train keeps its hotel power. Inside the cab, everything feels like it is on the edge of going dark. The toilet in the cab is frozen solid, and somewhere down the line, a BNSF freight engine is coming to pull Amtrak off the mountain. This is December 2022, Marias Pass, Montana. The Empire Builder is hung up on the route through Marias Pass country, where the line runs under century-old snow sheds in Avalanche Alley, and the crew is waiting for a grain hauler to come rescue them. The ALC-42 Charger was supposed to change everything. Siemens Mobility built them in Sacramento starting in 2020. They had bigger fuel tanks than the regional chargers. 2,200 gallons instead of 1,800. More power for heat and lights, 1,000 kilowatts instead of 600. A Cummins QSK95 16-cylinder diesel, derated to 4,200 horsepower for longer maintenance intervals. Amtrak bet big on them, a 125-unit fleet meant to carry long-distance service for decades. These machines were going to replace the P-42 fleet that had been running cross-country since the mid-90s. The new face of American passenger rail. The Empire Builder got them first. It runs from Chicago to Seattle and Portland, 2,200 miles across eight states, crossing the Continental Divide at Marius Pass in northwestern Montana. This is the same stretch where great northern engineer John Stevens walked alone through four feet of snow in December 1889. Railroad history credits Stevens with mapping the route in brutal winter conditions. The pass sits at an elevation of 5,213 feet. It gets 250 inches of snow in an average year. BNSF keeps snowplows and an avalanche forecasting team stationed at Essex just to keep the line open through winter. Great Northern built a dozen snowsheds here between 1912 and 1930, and 10 still stand today. More than a dozen railroaders have lost their lives to slides along this corridor over the decades. Amtrak put their newest power on their hardest route. Spokesperson Mark Magliari said these machines were going to be the face of passenger railroading for the next 40 years. The first revenue run was February 2022. Amtrak officials were there, and the cameras were rolling. But when departure time came, the ALC-42 locomotives could not communicate with the railroad's safety systems. A 25-year-old P-42 had to lead the train out. That locomotive was the one the chargers were supposed to replace, and it ended up leading them. That winter, the real problem started. The locomotives were shutting down in the cold. One moment you are moving, the next you are fighting a shutdown and watching systems drop out in the cold. The oil system in the locomotive could not handle temperature swings. When ambient temperature dropped far enough below zero, the oil stopped flowing properly. Amtrak said the cold weather oil piping issues made it struggle to deliver both traction power and head end power at the same time. So you are sitting in the cab watching gauges, 200 passengers behind you getting colder by the minute. Traction power or head end power? Pick one. The dynamic brake system had air filters that let in fine, light, dry snow. Reporters singled out that powder as something the design had not handled well. That powder got sucked into the system. It caused electrical faults. Everything shuts down. No power, no dynamic brakes, nothing. Siemens told the press that conditions were unusually extreme, where the locomotive experiences drastic changes in temperature. The crews running the Empire Builder could have said that January in Montana is not a surprise to anyone who has worked this route. The emergency fuel cutoff switches mounted around the outside of the locomotive could trigger from ice buildup. Snow accumulates on a button, the engine stops, and depending on what tripped, you are stuck until someone can get out and physically check the locomotive. You sit there at 20 degrees below zero until someone climbs outside and clears the switch by hand. Then you try again. Reporting at the time included crew complaints about basic cold weather livability in the cab, including the cab bathroom freezing up. At 20 below, the toilet freezes solid. You are sitting in a powerless locomotive in a snow shed on a mountain pass. You cannot move the train. You cannot keep the passengers warm.
you cannot use the toilet, and you are waiting for BNSF to send a freight engine to come get you. Siemens knew how to build for cold. They had done it four years earlier, 4,000 miles away, and they did not bring that knowledge to America. In 2014, Finnish National Railway VWA ER Group ordered 80 Vectron locomotives from Siemens in Finland. Winter temperatures there drop to minus 40 degrees Celsius every year. Fine snow blows horizontal across the tracks for months at a time. The contract specified reliable operation in Scandinavian conditions. Siemens modified the air intakes and reinforced the chassis to minimize snow ingress. They tested those units in actual Nordic winters before putting them into revenue service. The locomotives were rated for operation at minus 40 degrees Celsius. The Vectron is electric. The Charger is diesel electric, so they are not the same machine. Different machine, but the same enemy. Fine snow and extreme cold getting into places it should not, and systems that were not tolerant enough. Siemens solved that problem for Finland. They had the knowledge. They had the engineering. They did not apply it to the ALC-42. The question is why? Did Amtrak not specify extreme cold capability in the contract? Did Siemens not offer it? Did cost or timeline pressure push winterization down the priority list? The public documentation does not say. What we know is this. The same company built locomotives for a colder climate with the same type of snow conditions. Those units worked fine. The ones sent to Montana failed in their first real winter. Siemens knew how to build a locomotive for minus 40. They simply did not do it for Amtrak. Siemens pushed software updates after December 2022. They redesigned the oil piping and replaced it across the fleet. By 2024, Amtrak reported four times fewer failures. The chargers were outperforming the P-42s they replaced. On paper, that looked solved. The locomotives now run the Empire Builder, the Coast Starlight, the City of New Orleans, and the Capital Limited. 52 units are in the fleet, with 46 active, and routes are expanding. But that image does not disappear. Three chargers sitting without power in a snowshed, a freight engine dragging Amtrak off a mountain. That story travels. Amtrak sent 70 design changes to Siemens. Online claims circulated about penalties and delivery pressure, but those claims were never publicly confirmed. The Empire Builder kept having problems into 2025. BNSF Power was still getting coupled to Amtrak trains after failures near St. Cloud. Amtrak spokesman said there is no testing chamber that can replicate what the Empire Builder goes through in winter, maybe not on their budget. Siemens, however, has climate facilities in Vienna. They tested ice trains in simulated cold with artificial snow and wind. They tested the Finnish Vectrons in real Nordic winters. It is one of Amtrak's biggest modern diesel fleet bets. 125 units were intended to replace aging P-42 power. They were assigned to a route crossing the Continental Divide through one of the snowiest corridors in North America. The locomotives arrived without proper cold weather engineering, and they failed their first real winter. They needed a freight railroad to rescue them. They required 70 modifications before they worked right. They fixed a lot of it. The trains run now. But somewhere in a crew room in Chicago or Seattle, there is an engineer who remembers sitting in a frozen cab inside a wooden snowshed while BNSF came to pull them off the mountain. That is not something a railroad crew ever forgets. That story gets told. And the next time Amtrak announces a new locomotive order, someone in that room is going to ask about the weather testing.